I got this Randy Rhodes Jackson V style guitar in. It's so awesome. It's a little uh, finger printed up. I've been working on it for two days straight here. Uh, it came in set up with size 10s and uh, my buddy wants size 9s. He likes Ernie Ball Paradigms. If you haven't tried those strings, I'd recommend it. Monster guitar strings. Such a bright, good tone for for various uh, different types of uh, music. Here's here's one. Little... So very versatile. to do this video was Randy Rhodes, neoclassical guitar player, talking about, you know, the invention of the guitar as it went from a blues, rock, country, bluegrass, it just made its way through all Americana, folk, everything, right? Even Bob Dylan, folky folk of the folkers, the folkiest folk of all the folkers. Well, that that Mo Folker, he, he definitely had <laughs> could tell a casker in the back of his songs. Listen to any Bob Dylan, one of the world's greatest songwriters, but listen, whenever you hear electric guitar in the back, they're spanking on a good old telly. So that, that's how the electric guitar came out of the womb, so to speak. But <laughs> then what we did with it is just take it yeah. to level after level after level. Guy, you, you know about that guy, because you, you know you were there living this stuff, right? You saw it all, buddy. So now, with Randy Rhodes, he had an approach that was kind of different. Everybody at that era seemed to be leaning towards blues-based rock, country-based rock, rockabilly-based guitar, um, jazz, because jazz had been popular through the 20s and 30s and 40s when metal guitars became popular. They needed metal to compete with the volume against the metal brass horns. So to stay relevant, the guitar wouldn't be around now if they didn't start making the metal and louder. We, they would have faded out because this is pre-microphone stuff. And the, the only way that they can compete with the horn section in the most popular music then, jazz, Americana, was to have these giant, big, giant guitars, either wooden ones called jazz boxes or smaller ones called resonators. And they would have springs and what was a primitive, uh, you know, speaker system, really, using the energy from the springs to generate and the body of the metal guitar to project. Then they invented the electric guitar. So with that, we got energy and uh, what's that? Les Paul. The Les Paul, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, Fender, people have to realize, Leo Fender and Lester Paul, they were friends and inventors together. Yeah, and Les Paul would lay down 24 tracks yes. on top well, of each yes, other. Yes, yes, without a doubt, they were inventors in a little bit of a different way. Les Paul was an absolute musician wizard. Amongst the guitar community, he was known to be one of the best guitarists and uh, um, like Eddie Van Halen, Jimi Hendrix, you know, before then you heard Les Paul, okay? Um, and a few other ones, but I'm not gonna get on, that's a different video. So Les Paul was an inventor with electronics, an inventor in all the techniques and all the scientifics having to do with music and recording it and playing it. So he was a great candidate to actually invent what we need because well, actually inventions come, you know, uh, born out of necessities, right? So him being a player, he knew what we collectively as guitar players needed. Leo Fender had a wonderful idea. The way that Lester Paul wanted to make instruments was like a fine instrument crafting kind of a way because he understood what needed to go into an instrument to make it uh, so that it could be so expressive. Leo took ideas and made it so that it can follow the automotive industry Leo's main goal was to make instruments that can be made by common people, untrained people, in an assembly line format so that every American can have a guitar in their hand and affordable. So, you know, in a way, without both of those guys, I wouldn't be standing here making this video right now. Almost pretty sure not. Mm -hmm. Now, to get back onto this classical Neo, you know, uh, Randy Rhodes type of deal, he was using, of course, a, a classical uh, vintage original shape. He started using the Les Paul. 
And if you look when he first started with Ozzy Osbourne or his first band, which is Quiet Riot, um, you know, he was using the white Les Paul custom. But a lot of his playing technique being my, uh, neoclassical worked better. You see, uh, country guitars and blues guitars, we, we tend to keep the neck not not straight, you know, not not perpendicular to our body, but at, at a small angle, okay? Just just a slight one. It's just the orientation that we prefer for that style. In classical music, think of how a classical guitar player would sit with their leg up on a footstool and their neck comes to a 45 degree angle. That is so important because it changes completely your angle to fretboard. Your fingertip angles to fretboard changes incredibly and, and the pressure on your wrist which is generating a lot of those angles changes greatly uh, and and geometrically like in other words there's a progression there the, the higher i arrange the guitar neck up the more mobility i have the more freedom i have to to get above strings if you're sitting there playing your acoustic flat on your lap like this or you're just beginning out playing your electric and you can't make a c chord and no matter what you do you can't stop bumping the adjacent strings try this out right just try out rearrange the guitar so that you're at a 45 degree angle you know 90 would be holding it straight up and down like this there's a 90 there there's a 45 for those of you that hadn't had geometry yet or did and forgot a long time ago, like my buddy Guy here. Back when he was in college, I think it was about 470 years. Oh, we didn't tell you, we're gurus so um, and wizards. So, uh, like Guy, what are you, 829 years old now? I'm uh, working, I'm, I'm pushing um, 600 and you start to forget after a while. I'm going to be 651 years old in March. It's unbelievable how fast the time goes by. I'll be this 67. seems like a couple of years. It's hundreds of years. Oh my God, this is insane. Instead of holding the guitar up higher, why don't you just grow bigger hands? Well, not everybody is, <laughs> is. so uh, we're, we're in Key West, right? So my neighbor's uh, pool heater just kicked out. You have to bear with me. On. I hope you can still hear this. So I think that, that probably sounds loud from your perspective. I'm yeah. behind the amp, so I can't hear how loud it is. Good for me, right? So anyway, you get on the F, F power port. Get that slide in there, watch it. Right? And then. techniques to give him the sound of this okay if I was just playing and letting every note ring out the same amount of volume it, it wouldn't have the same dramatic effect Listen. It, it reflects it it sounds like it it just wouldn't be what he's doing you know what he's doing is playing more of a staccato they call it where you're kind of killing the note right after you're playing it. And that's done by the palm of my hand over here, barely touching the strings. You see, just just uh, to say, your control panel is here. This is the cockpit of your guitar, okay? Your hand is going to be laying right on top of that saddle here. Not on the strings, but it's meant to be so close to the strings that at any time I can go. And here I'll how I can do a quarter of the it, it dampens the sound because my palm is hitting the strings here. It keeps them from ringing out. So if I'm doing chords, there it is. 
She came out. Question left. here. She came and went back. Oh, okay. All right, all right, all right. We'll, we'll we'll get to that in a minute. My daughter's in visiting and she's cooking us a awesome dinner, so um, I don't dare miss that for anything. But for right now, though, let me show you these last couple of things I got planned for us here. Uh, just to get you started, I'm gonna have to go into an elaborate lesson to show you how to pick this properly. But to get you faking it in the beginning so you can jam along to the song, right? You know, you, we got this uh, F that comes out of the main chord progression, which is F sharp minor. And then A, A, F sharp. I'm not using power chords, so not minor or major. You don't have to think about that. F sharp, remember power chord, root note, skip a note, down to the next string, power chord. That's what it's naming it. F sharp, A, E, F sharp. Blah, 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 to that point. Then it's going to go to it. And it's going to be droning on this A string. Like a gallop. And this A chord, it's coming from a bar chord, if you know enough about guitar to know that. A full bar A chord right there. Okay, that chord, if you look at just the very uh, bottom of it, I'm just stripping away the notes I'm not playing, uh, so I would finger it this way, and I'm only picking these three. Now this open E note is also in the chord, if you accidentally hit it, it's okay, but I would suggest try to get your hand in a position to only hit those, and then you're going to drone on the A. left hand or fretting hand down just one fret each that's it and then invert which means flip these two fingers so watch again down down up down 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 up strum that's the feeling you need down down up strum down up down up strum and then there's a little pattern you memorize down down up strum down up down up strum down down up strum down up this is what I'm talking about. Got your A. I'm going to start on my small A. And I move down one fret. Invert these two. A whole step, which means two frets, same chord form. I'm not moving anything except for where I'm doing it. Holding the same chord form. Same thing. So. much gain let me turn it off so you can hear the notes clearer this way when you're playing along to it you'll be able to hear if you're doing it right or wrong okay. I shouldn't say 
We do a pinch harmonic on the first one of every of every uh, pull up, which I think he does. Artificial harmonics, another lesson, I'll put the link in there. I'm doing strings. So it's string three on the seventh fret, string two on the seventh fret, string five on the sec, I mean string fret five on the second string, and then fret five on the first string. So I'm going dun 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 dun. It's not easy. I have my guitar turned down if I crack it up and it hurt, it becomes much easier. So we got that up. Uh, I love that. For this first part of the lesson that, that's big time okay uh, the sound of the guitar just so you know I'm using a little tiny small battery powered Roland micro cube it's unbelievable as long as you know how to set an amp you can just do anything if you have any questions hit me in the comment I'll take a picture and I'll explain to you how I'm getting this awesome sound out of this very cheap and actually old out of date amp at this point. Okay. But it's got a lot of tone to it. Thank you very much. I appreciate you.